What's up everyone out there in YouTube world, Facebook world, social media world, the world. Thank you for watching another episode of Musings with NGL. Today we're going to talk about concealed carry insurance. What is it? Do you need it? Is it a good idea? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. I'm not. A, I'm not going to get into the various companies out there. I'm going to let people basically do their own research on that and decide which company is best for them. I'll give you some advice on what you should look for. But essentially, I'm just going to talk about the concept of it. As most of you know, I'm a defense attorney. I'm a criminal defense attorney. I practice in the state of Florida. So of course, most things I say I always only deal with Florida law. If you live in a different state, figure out what the laws of your state are. But this is a general concept. It's not really about a law. So what is concealed carry insurance? Well. Concealed carry insurance is basically just like any other insurance. You purchase it, you pay a monthly premium, and what it does is it covers you in the case of a situation where you would have to use your firearm in self-defense, okay? So if somebody attacks you and you have to use your firearm in self-defense, whether that's just pointing it at them or actually shooting them or, God forbid, worst case scenario, actually killing them, you can expect any time that you do any of those actions, you're probably going to get charged with a crime, or at the least, you're certainly going to be investigated with a crime and you may at least be arrested for a crime. Certainly when you get arrested for any sort of serious crime like that, because they're all going to be felonies, there's going to be a significant amount of financial cost that's going to come down to you. You're going to need to first, if you get arrested, hire a bondsman because you're going to have to post bond to get out of jail, which is probably going to cost you tens of thousands of dollars, especially if somebody's dead. Then, of course, the biggest expense you're going to come up with is you got to hire a top-notch criminal defense attorney to represent you. Depending on how serious the case is, how lengthy the, or how difficult the facts are, is somebody dead versus somebody just you waved a gun at somebody, the fees can range anywhere from, you know, maybe five grand or something for simply brandishing a firearm all the way up to, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars if somebody's actually dead and you're looking at a first degree murder charge, second degree murder charge, you're looking at a trial, et cetera, et cetera. All that stuff is going to cost you significant amounts of money. And then as the case goes on, there are other additional fees that you'd probably have to pay. For example, you'd have to probably hire a private investigator. You may have to hire an expert witness in self-defense. You may have to ex hire an expert firearms witness. You may need a subpoena witness. You're probably going to have to hire a transcriptionist to take you know, depositions and all these other things. So let's just take your average case where you get in a road rage incident and there's an allegation that you pointed a gun at somebody and that's it. Just that simple case alone between bond, attorney, private investigators, subpoenas, et cetera, et cetera, could be anywhere from twenty dollars to $30,000. That's the lowest end case that you could get. Now, take that and add a dead person. Add somebody who was actually shot and in the hospital. Now you're talking definitely at minimum fifty grand. I mean, if somebody's shot in a hospital, you're looking at fifty grand or more. If somebody's dead, again, you could be looking at a couple hundred thousand dollars, depending on how serious the state attorney's office wants to go. And that could, again, that could just be your attorney alone, depending on how difficult it gets. And then you throw in experts and everything else. So it's going to cost you lots and lots of money. What insurance does is, just like if you were in a car accident, that would cost you lots and lots of money. Insurance covers those fees. So you buy yourself concealed carry firearm insurance. You pay a monthly fee, uh, just like any other insurance premium, and then they will cover those costs. So you get a little card, and on the back of the card is a phone number. Again, it's just like car insurance. And if you shoot somebody or get involved in any sort of self-defense situation, you can call the number on the back of the card, and the company will kind of take over from there. They will find you a lawyer. I am on the list of several concealed carry uh, companies in my area. So you call the number on the back of it. They can call my cell phone in the middle of the night or they'll call other lawyers who are on their list. Every company has certain numbers that are pre-approved that are on the list for certain areas. So you just call them and they'll put you in touch or they'll call one of those lawyers at two o'clock in the morning while you're sitting in jail. They, they will call the bondsman. They will pay the bondsman. They will overnight checks the lawyers. They will pay for everybody else. So they basically cover all of your fees and they snap into they snap into business immediately upon calling the number on the back of the card. So it's a very good thing to have. So my opinion is, yes, if you're going to conceal carry your firearm or open carry or whatever, again, they don't do that in Florida, but if you're going to carry a firearm or have one even in your home on a regular basis, you should get some sort of self-defense concealed carry insurance because your fees are going to be a problem. I get calls all the time from people who get arrested for these charges and don't have the insurance and they simply can't afford the fees. Um, 
it's just the way that it is. And then you end up getting a public defender. And I'm not going to get into the pros and cons of public defenders. But let's just say if you can afford a private attorney, you're usually better off in that situation, depending on the attorney, of course. So if you can afford the insurance, you should get it. Now, do your research in the insurance, just like any other insurance company. Most insurance companies have tiers, you know, gold, platinum, silver or whatever. And they have different levels. So your premiums go up, but your coverage also goes up. Um, make sure you find one that is uh, reputable that's been around for a while. Don't try and find some fly-by-night one. You also want to make sure when you pick your category or read your contract that you're getting the type of contract that allows you to select your lawyer. So remember I said there's there's list of lawyers who are pre-approved, obviously. But if you get sent to a lawyer and you don't like that lawyer, you don't want to necessarily get stuck with that lawyer, okay? You don't want it to be like an HMO where you, don't, you can only go to that doctor because they're the only doctor in your network. You want to make sure you find one that allows you to pick your own attorney. That way, maybe you use that attorney initially to get you out of jail, but then if you don't like that attorney or you want to hire somebody else, they'll still approve that other attorney and write them a check. So you want to make sure that you have... Um, options to be able to pick the attorney that you want and you want to make sure that you pick the correct coverage that you think you need for a plan that you can afford so in summation concealed carry insurance is insurance that you carry to help you in the event that you need to use your firearm for self-defense it'll cover all of your cost it's definitely something that everybody should look into and they should get if they can afford it and if they're going to carry on a regular basis and do your research like i said there's all kinds of companies out there a lot of them been around for a long time some of them are relatively new You'll be able to find them. Just Google who they are and they're all out there. But I would recommend that you, hi I highly, highly recommend that if you can afford this insurance, that you get it because most people are not going to be able to afford the fees should they have to use their firearm in a worst case scenario. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching as always. Like, share, subscribe, spread the word about my channel. I'm trying to get up to a thousand subscribers. That would be great. In the meantime, I'll see you next time. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, stay vigilant, and as always, carry on.